It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Wednesday evening, October 17th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. My job is to help new traders earn consistent profits using a simple and reliable trading strategy. And my plan this evening is to identify the most reliable trading opportunities setting up for tomorrow's trading session. And tonight, we're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. Starting off this evening, crude oil is bearish with a spike in range pattern tonight. And that tells me to focus on buyer failures using the two try rule up above those range highs. But I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't keeping my eyes open for the reversal. Will the market reverse tomorrow on oil back up to that 72? Only time will tell. And I got a plan to capitalize on anything we get tomorrow morning. Over to the S&P, the S&P is bullish with a triangle pattern tonight. That tells me to look for buying opportunities below the triangle lows tomorrow morning. NASDAQ is also bullish, this time with a trading range as it tries to retest yesterday's highs. Right? Buyers got that deep pullback they were looking for, but ended the day in a range. So we're looking for seller failures for buying opportunities on the E-minis to finish that move going higher. Gold is range bound with a nested trading range on the chart this evening. You're going to definitely want to stick around for the chart on gold tonight. That tells me to combine the two try rules for very, uh, very reliable buying opportunities tomorrow morning. Very interesting chart tonight on the gold. And of course, we'll wrap up tonight on the euro. The euro is bearish with a spike in channel pattern. That tells me to look for selling opportunities using the buyer failure to try pattern above that moving average tomorrow morning. Boy, I got a great newsletter in store for you guys and gals. We got that big dip on the E-minis. That turned into a range. We got a nested set of ranges on gold, right? Really great chart on gold. And I'm telling you, I'm watching that crude. We get, a, we get a, obviously a bear move down on crude today, but I'm watching for that reversal. We got a lot to cover tonight. We're going to put the whole plan together. That way you guys have a plan for tomorrow morning's trade room. Before we jump into our charts, though, I don't want you to forget, if you're watching me this evening on YouTube, right, you can find a detailed description of this entire tra uh, trading strategy written out right here on my blog at SidewaysMarkets.com. I'll leave all the links in the description of this video. Also, if you have any questions about anything covered in this video tonight, please remember you can post them in the comment section below the video. Also, if you don't if you like what you see, please help support this channel by subscribing. And when you do, make sure you hit the bell icon on YouTube so you always get notified every time I publish another video. And if your goal is to become a consistently profitable trader, I know many of you are dreaming of the lifestyle that comes along with a successful trading career, right? I specialize in helping new traders, right, transform into incredibly profitable traders. You can start your transformation. All I need is your name and your email address right there in front of you right on our blog and then don't forget you can download all the charts from tonight's video are available for download below the video tonight on our blog again I'll put all the links in the description on YouTube and then up in the upper right hand corner here don't forget we get a toll-free phone number if you have any questions pick up the phone and call right and then don't forget we got live support right as well all right looking good we got a lot to cover here tonight it is great to be back here i apologize i'm i'm a little bit late here tonight i'm still running ragged from last night i was uh gosh it feels it feels like i never slept last night right between the red Sox and the and the dodgers game oh my goodness 13 13 innings Oh my goodness! I could have kissed. I could have kissed Bellinger right when he hit that single. Bottom line, though, is and they got some more coming. I better hurry up and get this out of the way so you guys can get over to the TV right and finish up watching. But let's roll up our sleeves. We got some work to do because we got some money to make tomorrow. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, eight o'clock Eastern time, right? We'll be in the trade room. Uh, me as your Sherpa, right? I'll be your guide tomorrow, right? Going through all of this with you tomorrow in the trade room. So tomorrow morning, what do we got for news here tomorrow? We pretty much have everything kind of packed into that 8.30 block tomorrow morning. Jobless claims, Philly Fed. Uh, jobless claims, I'm not too worried about, but that Philly Fed is definitely going to be, right, a big market moving event tomorrow morning. So all the action starts bright and early tomorrow and uh, not much else right you can see there's not much else we got the Nat gas reporter for one of those crazies who trades the NG 
But uh, no, no, nothing else that I can see here. Yeah, you are crazy for trading the NG. You heard me correctly on that. Crazy, crazy market, that NG. Uh, not enough volume, just not liquid enough for my liking. But the bottom line, though, is we got the Fed, right, Philly Fed survey tomorrow, uh, similar to like the zoo report, right, if you're in if you're in Europe. So that's going to be a really bo- a big market mover from our morning uh, in the U.S. session. And then, of course, we got some big news on Friday, right? We'll talk about that tomorrow night on the newsletter. But tomorrow morning, 8.30 Eastern Time, 8.30 Eastern Time. And again, tomorrow morning, we're opening up our trade room, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. So we'll have a front row seat for that news kickstart in the session tomorrow at 8.30. Let's jump into some charts. Got a lot to cover here tonight. We got crude, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and let's just toss in some euro just for just for good measure. Now, crude is bearish. Got a trading range, a measured move, and a reversal line on the chart this evening. Uh, the bears had a strong run lower today, right? That's, uh, that's that's pretty pretty easy to see, right? Bears had a, a relatively strong run lower today, running pretty much free, right? With that with that strength pullback strength, right? Pretty pretty much freeing themselves of this weekly range we've been kind of you know running with. We had that pendulum swing, which is always interesting. If we remember that from last week or the beginning of this week, excuse me, had that big pendulum swing up above the range, pendulum swing down. It's not a huge surprise to see where we where we went. But nonetheless, though, I would say at this point, it's it's a little bit too bearish to really call this a range bound market in the sense of using that same range right from earlier on this week now we do have another range right we pretty much nosedived right even through inventories today at 10 30 and then just kind of uh, right kind of hit the brakes here right around that big number at 70 you'll notice i opted for a much narrower range than than to go with the typical kind of that's your range Obviously, that's kind of the overall range, but I think it's pretty easy to see the the most important range is from 17 down to 85. And the reason why that's so important is because you're going to take that range, you're going to copy and paste it down. That's key support. Copy and paste it up, right? That's key resistance. So now we've got some additional support and resistance levels that we're going to want to use to kind of put together our trades or our patterns for entry tomorrow morning. The new range is the big clue. With a bear bias, it tells me to focus on selling up above the high of that range using that two try failure pattern, right? But like I said in the intro, I'd be foolish not to plan for at least a reversal back in right to that weekly trading range, right? I mean, heck, it'd be it's kind of it'd be foolish not to at least be ready for that, right? So it all depends really on how the buyers look when they try to go higher, right? Do they run higher, right? If they do, we probably are going to have a pretty easy job going higher here. But do they stall and struggle? That's really what we want to be ready for, right, tomorrow. And don't forget, right, we're also watching the volume closely right now for contract rollover, right? It looks like tomorrow we might be on that 1218 contract. We talked about this last night briefly on the newsletter. Remember, it's around that time of the month again, around the 18th of the month, right, is tomorrow. So, of course, usually around the 18th, and you can almost set your clock by this, guys, 18th of the month. You're, you know, and again, what I'll usually start doing is reminding you guys, you know, 16th, 17th. But usually around the 18th of the month, we start watching the contracts, right? Of course, the current month is the 1118. The following month is the 1218, right? Oil rolls over every one month. And so you can clearly see right now there's more volume on that uh, on that 1218 contract. That may not be the case tomorrow. That may not be the case over the next few hours. Um, if we're if we're kind of close, right? You know, if we're if we're very similar, it's not going to really matter which contract that you trade. But you know, the rule of thumb is we're not talking about contract expiration right now, guys. We're talking about rollover. And rollover usually happens about a week and a half, two weeks before the actual expiration, which will be at the end of the month. So we've got that we got that 1218. If we're seeing a lot more volume on the 1218 contract, we'll obviously trade that 1218 contract tomorrow. Just go where the volume is, right? That's the, that's the easy way to think about contract rollover. Um, and remember, you know, we we talk about this stuff. I teach all this stuff, right, in our beginner classes. A lot of people struggle with contract expiration and the different months. It's it's really the most complicated part about futures. You know, once you get over the whole fact that you can just sell without actually borrowing anything right once you kind of get over that fact that trading futures 
you know, besides the whole real money on the line thing, right, is kind of like a video game, right? You buy, you hit buy, you want to sell, you hit sell. In stocks, right, you hit sell, you've got to actually borrow those shares, right, from your broker, right? So it's a lot more technical and it requires a lot more money in stocks. In futures, right, buying and selling is the same thing. So once you get over that, that kind of hurdle in futures, usually from there, it's usually the, okay, well now what about this expiration thing, right? It's pretty simple. Oil every one month, around the 18th of the month, just wait for the volume to roll over. Once the volume's higher in the next month, just trade that month, right? It's, it's, it's really that simple. We'll talk more about that, right, in our classroom sessions in our beginner course. Bottom line right now is what's the most important actionable information, if I can speak some English, right? We got that strong move down, right, into that, right, into that, into that uh, range, right? Anytime we have a range with a bear bias like that, right? into that range, we're pretty much looking for two things. One's going to be the one I want, which is the two try failure above that high. The second one will be that breakout pullback right below that low. I'm looking for the one try, two try here for the bulls, right? Two try failure, and then looking for that nice strong signal going back down to retest that low. That's ultimately where I think the most battle is going to go on tomorrow, right? That'll be where does it hold, does it reverse? I think that's going to be where the most, uh, uh, you know, variable, big question mark is going to be for tomorrow. We're going to talk about that in a second as well. And then, of course, the push lower, the key going lower is, is to get outside of that range expansion, right? And then look for that pullback from there. So we go back to the, the chart now. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here. I'm still using these slower time frames to kind of show you, right, the bigger picture here. I always kind of try to use a slower time frame, but I need to show you a bigger picture here. The bottom line, though, is the range, right? So basically, we're looking for that one try, two try, one try, two try, two try for the bulls, right? Let those buyers try once, let them try twice, and then we'll sell above that range, right? I want to include some resistance up here, right? So I got that that prior swing, that's a reversal line. In my opinion, that, that 61 is going to be a key line in the sand. I think if we can get through that 61 and hold, we're, we're probably good for the reversal. Uh, so 61 is definitely going to be a level that we're watching closely here, right? So up one try, two try, right? Back down in. I'm looking to sell that two try failure pattern up above the high of that, of that trading range. At the same time, right, you're, you're wondering why it was so important to have the correct trading range because if I take the size of that range and I bring it down you'll notice that's exactly where they turned off of here I mean not exactly but basically basically where they turned off of there I need to get through that area now try to use it as resistance basically you've got to get through that area get that moving average right through that area and come back and use it as resistance that's the breakout pullback pattern that we'll be looking for Right. So ultimately, there are there are two ways to trade this. Right. There's one is the sell side. One try two try. Right. Failure back down again. You've got the two try right two try buyer failure back into that range. And then two would be for the sellers. You're using that range expansion area. Got to get through it. Right. How far? How far? Far enough to get that moving average to clear below it. Right. And then we can look for that pullback. And we can go from there. So really, it's the it's the two try failure pattern, right? And it's the ultimately the breakout pullback pattern. Be very very careful though, trying to sell right in this area here, just because again we've got that range expansion level of support, right? This is all support here, so you don't want to be selling into the level of support. The real the real I think the real money here be if we can catch this thing going back up into that range. You know, like I mentioned earlier, that pendulum swing. Right. We're not too far off, you know, and, and that seventy dollar barrel area kind of gave a little bit more of a drag lower here. I think this move right here was really nothing more than just kind of an exhaustion push based on the way they, they reversed it back up here. So this may look a little bit different on the on the twelve eighteen contract. Again, we're kind of battling with rollover right now. So on the twelve eighteen it might be a little bit different, but ultimately I'm I'm really focused on how the market reacts going higher. Here's a couple things that you want to be thinking. First of all, if we see that strong move up and they can hold that pullback, right, and jump off that pullback, this is a bull market, right? That's, that's going to be pretty simple. You know, again, I talked about this, right, the 61 area, right? You know, we see this thing go up. 
again, we call these, what do we call these? One, two, three reversals, right? One is a strong move against a trend. Two is a pullback to the moving average. Got to hit the moving average. And three is that strong jump off the moving average, right? That one, two, three reversal, this thing's going to be bullish. At that point, I'm going to mark up that high, mark up this new channel, and we try to get into this thing on this, right, on that pullback. Now, the hard part might be we may not get that pullback, right? We may not get that pullback. So another scenario to keep in mind is, is if it just runs, right? Short covering rally. Now, we talked about this earlier this week, right? Short covering rallies have a distinct personality to them. They feel like, right, they feel like the house is on fire and get out, right? It's as, as fast as you can, right? Drop everything, right? Forget what you don't need and get out of this position, right? It has this urgency feeling to it, right? It's not going to pull back to the moving average. You're not going to see it give you that perfect strength pullback, you know, strength one, two, three reversal. It's going to have this feeling to it like, Bro, if you don't get in right now, you're never going to get into this. When that happens, all you can really do is is look for these traps. That's all you can really do. And this is not drawn to scale, but if we start seeing this thing just kind of boom, 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 right, kind of punching higher here, in other words, it's not pulling back. There's that sense of urgency. That's going to be your cue right there. And this is where chart patterns don't exactly do it justice. You know, this is where this is where a rookie trader evolves into a veteran trader when you know what that personality feels like. And how do you know what the personality feels like? You spend a lot of time watching price action, not looking at charts in hindsight, right? But watching real time live price action, because when you feel that momentum and you feel that personality change, you're going to know what's coming. Right, so that's definitely something that I'm watching for as well. The big variable for tomorrow is going to be when this happens. We get a strong move up, right? It's relatively bullish, but we haven't pulled back yet. We pull back to the moving average, right? What's going to happen is you're going to have buyers who are going to see that strong move up. Again, a short covering rally is going to go up, shallow pullback, up, shallow pullback, up, right? It's going to feel like, no, 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 no. They're not pulling back. They just keep rallying higher. Every time it pulls back, they buy it. It pulls back, they buy it. it pull, right? That's a short covering rally. What I'm talking about is, is just a little, a little punch, right? A little punch, right? A little low volume punch higher. Right? It's not pulling back shallow. It's not doing nothing. It's just straight up. Right? The tough part here is going to be, do you buy that pullback and go from there? I don't think you should. I don't think that's the. I don't. Th that's not what I'm going to do tomorrow. What I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to wait for it, and then look for that strong signal. That signal is going to be right. It's going to tell a story there. Right? Because that signal will tell us. For example, does that candle go like this? right? Red candle can't close above the moving average. Makes sense, right? That's not a sell signal. That's a wait, wait, wait signal, right? Or do we see it like this, right? Where it cranks lower, right? That's going to be your sell signal. Then from there, find that prior low and just drop your order sell right there, right? So hopefully we get that strong move down. And what I can do is look to sell it as it pops back up. Right. So, you're, again, it's going to be a little bit of a cat and mouse game tomorrow. Right. That transition on this particular scenario. Right. The easy one's going to be up to try back down. The easy one's going to be short covering rally right by the trap. The hard one's going to be strong move up. No confirmation yet to try at the moving average. Now, what do we get? Do we get that big wick? Right. Saying wait for more. Or do we see that? Bam, right, that big move down. If that's the case, that's your signal. And what I'll do is I'm going to try to tuck my order in right underneath it and try to get that order filled to, fit, to finish that move back off to retest that low. So now you know the plan if we go lower, right, got to clear through that 53 area, right, get through that 53 area, right, if we go higher to try failure, right, or is it strength, pullback strength, new channel, buy the low, or is it short covering rally, right? All hands on deck, drop what you're doing, buy the trap, right? Or is it, again, right, that kind of, that, that, that uh, what is the word here? That finesse, right? We got to wait for that strong, right, signal and get back in. So we've talked about range breakouts, two try failures, waiting for the proper signal candle. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, I, how, much, how much more can I pack into this first chart? I want to keep going. 
but I have so much more to share with you. So let's keep let's keep this process going. If you're here for the first time today, the best way to learn more is I'm going to drop a free trading class in the upper right hand corner. Grab that free trading class. If you're on the blog on, on Sideways Markets, it's right below the video. Just look below the video. See a big red button that says free trading class, right? Grab that free trading class. It'll be worth every second of your time. I know your time is valuable. I'm not going to waste your time, right? But you will learn a ton on that free class. You'll learn all about the patterns that I just kind of spit off here rapid fire. Because again, we got a lot to cover here tonight, but I want to make sure that you can get the most of this. So grab that free course, get that foundation link for you and then make sure you come back and keep watching our videos every evening on the YouTube channel. All right, let's keep going. How about some S&P here right now? S&P is bullish with a triangle or a range, a measured move, and a support trend line on the chart this evening. The buyers got the pullback they wanted, right? But it's easy to see the bulls aren't exactly thrilled, right, with buying these highs again, causing this kind of triangle, right, this kind of triangle flat moving average, right? The buyers got their pullback they were looking for, right? They got their pullback. You know, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? It was hard to imagine um, a pullback that wouldn't be seen as a buy here, but they definitely ran out of gas, so to speak, right before they reached a retest of that high. The range right now is the big clue. There's a bull bias to it, right? And of course, unlike oil, oil had a bear bias to it, right? This bull bias says, I don't want to buy the breakout higher, Right, We don't want to buy breakouts because breakouts don't work. I know people talk about them all the time on YouTube, but I, take it from me. They do not work very well. Right, Whoever's teaching about breakouts right now clearly is not trading very often. <laughs> right, They're reading the old school trading books. Breakouts don't work very well. So rather than breakouts, what do we do? We look for that one try, two try, failure pattern. We look for sellers to try once, try twice, but the low of that range, and what do we do? right? We buy into their stops, right? When those bears are getting run out of this position, right? They short covering rally, right? They cover their shorts. Exactly what happened in the, on the S&P today, right? Around, around 11 o'clock, short covering rally ran back higher, right? So that's the way you trade a bull market into, right, into a trading range. Now, the undoubtable, the, the, the undoubtable question though is, is what if we push higher here, right? What if we do push higher? If we push higher, the hard part is going to be, I don't want to buy high, but I can use this trend line as support. So if we do try to push higher, I can use that trend line right as my key level of support. The key is going to be doing this before we get back up to retest that high. Because once we retest that high, I mean, who knows, right? It's very difficult to tell where we're going to go from there. We may pull back off that high and create a larger range. So as we look closer here, right, it's obvious the bulls have control. Forget, forget about what happened back here, right? It's pretty much irrelevant. The only thing that really matters is we know where they're trying to go. They're trying to go to that 24 and a quarter. If they can get through that 24 and a quarter, then they'll probably be trying to go to that measured move next. Okay, so that's the major milestone. That's what I call my market objective, right? When you take my free trading class, we'll talk about the market's objective and how important that is for avoiding losses, knowing where the market's objective is. It's one of those little tiny things. You know, you'll always hear me talk about the small hinge that swings the big door, right? Knowing the knowing the market's objective, right, is always that small hinge. It'll make big impacts in your in your trading career by simply knowing how to use it. So the bottom line is is all that really matters right now is is we know there's the objective. And here's our range, bull bias into that range. Now you're more than welcome to call this the range if you wanted to. I think the triangle's fine. The triangle fits better. You can easily see the triangles there. Now, triangles are a little bit different than regular ranges because you have the benefit of the swings. The swings are really the keys to a triangle. You'll find that the best trades will usually come off the triangle edges. Whereas on a range, right, on a range, you take that trading range, copy and paste it up, that creates resistance, copy and paste it down, right? That creates support, and that's usually where you're gonna find your best trades, right? Off those off those range expansions, right? Buying low, selling high. That's usually where you find the best trades. With a triangle though, it's just a little bit different, right? The best trades are gonna come off of those 
edges, right? Edges, those swings, right? Those extremes. That's typically where you want to wait for, right? Those patterns. So we're buyers, right? I want to be a buyer. I want to buy below the low of the range. I'm going to focus on those edges right there. So that's what creates the battle zone, right? 2802, down to that. I would say, you know, maybe go a bit further there, down to that 95, 96 area there. But let's be honest. Once we get down to the low of that range, we're going to be below the moving average, right? The bears are going to be calling up their, their friends saying, see, I told you, this is just a bounce. We're going back lower. They're going to try to sell that, right? They're going to try to prove their buddies wrong, right? I told you this is just a dead cat. I told you, right? We're going back down to those lows. They're going to try to sell this thing again, right? That's our two try. One try, two try. Now, make no mistake. If those sellers can hold this move and run on strength, then we do have a reversal. Draw the new low. Find the new channel. Mark up that prior swing. Sell the pullbacks from there, right? It's a relatively easy strategy waiting for the reversal. That's the plan, right? If you want to be a seller, wait for it to turn, okay? Right? If you try, if you try to sell strong moves down, well, look what happened back here. That's a real strong move down. But look what happened as soon as it pulled back to the moving average. Still want to be a seller on that? Yeah, exactly, right? So once we're going higher here, again, every time we pull back, strong move down. Do they hold? No, right? If we pull back again, what's different? I know, I know. This time it's different. This news report today, some guy on CNN said it's doing this or that. Who cares, right? It's bullish momentum, right? Turn off the television, close the newspaper down, get out of the chat rooms. What is the momentum right now? It's bullish. So until it turns bearish, we're buying. One try, right? Two try, one try, two try. Where are their stops at? Bingo. We can buy into those stops. Now, this trend line coming down is key because that's going to be your initial first little guy target, right? Let's go like this. Let's draw it like that, right? So, you're, so again, you're trying to go up, and then from there, I'm trying to use that trend line, right, to finish the sucker off, right? So two try rule, and then using that trend line there before we get back up, right, to retest that high because to retest the high, that's your, that's your big target right now, right? That's your big target right now. Okay, then the measured move will be your target from there. All right, guys. So pretty easy for the buyers. One try, two try. Failure back up. Don't chase. Pull back. Buying off, right? Buying off the off the trend line. Buying off, buying of those stops, those bears. Now, what if we go higher? If we go higher here, this is where the tricky part's going to come in. Because if we go higher and get back to that high, time out. Right? If we go back to the high, time out. What do I mean by that? Wait. Because one of two things are going to happen. One. We collapse off the high. And if that's the case, now look for sellers, and this will probably become one big range, right? Something like that. We'll probably collapse back down to this 2790 area. It's tough to tell right now, right? But if, it, if, if, we, see, if we see a mass profit taking, right? If we see everybody exit at that high, then it becomes a range, right? Anytime you see a strong move like we did yesterday, we get that deep pullback. We go back to retest the high, right? We're trying to get back to retest the high right now. From there, do we collapse off the profit taking? If that's the case, it becomes a range. We'll come down, look to buy, go back up from there, okay? Or do we push through the high, right? Do we push through the high? If we push through the high, we're then looking for the next objective. It's usually a measured move. Make sure you don't buy into it. Most important thing though is, is trying to make sure now that we can get this moving average up and then look to keep buying from there. The key is get that moving average up above that high. A lot of times what will happen is, is it'll hit the highs, pull back, right? And people try to buy right here. The problem is that's not a reliable place. You're buying right into the market's objective. You don't know it enough yet, right? This could easily end up collapsing back down and become that big range, then you get a bull market into a range, okay? It may, it may pull higher, right? It may push higher, but what I want to see is I want to wait for that little bit more proof, a little more proof, get that moving average up above that high, and then we can buy it. A lot more reliable trade, right? I talk about this all the time. Trade a little bit of profit for a whole lot more probability, right? What's more important to you, a, a, a better winning percentage, right, or more profitable trades? Be honest. What do you think? What's more important to you? right? A bigger winner, right? More profit or a higher winning percentage? Please say higher winning percentage. 
because that over the long run, right, is going to make you a lot more, right, than just taking more winning trades, right? You'll make more money with more confidence. More confidence means bigger account size. Bigger account size means bigger position size, right? Bigger position size means you can trade. You can trade cool as a cucumber, right? Big position, only the perfect A plus patterns. That's the holy grail for day trading. Let's keep going though. How do we reverse, right? How do we reverse? What's a reversal? Oh, sorry. I didn't finish this, right? We want to get back above this. But again, if we get back to retest the high, right, we got to wait through this, right? Use this now as your key level here. If we break through, looking to buy that pullback on the way up to that measured move. The real goal would be get up by the pullback before, right? And the key here is, is to get that moving average up. That's the key. Get the moving average up. And again, you want to get in before, right? Before we get back up to retest that high. That's the key. Got to be before, right? You don't want to see it retest that high yet. You want that, you want that objective to still be there, right? That's the trick, okay? Now, how do we reverse? What would a reversal look like? We talked about this briefly, right? Strength, move lower, hold that pullback, and go. We call these one, two, three reversals. Reversals do happen all the time, but they're almost impossible to predict, right? Hence, point, right, case in point, that pullback today, right? Reversals are really difficult to predict. Okay, the key is, is wait for that reversal to hold that pullback. And again, sometimes that like we see today, right, it pulls back and never hits that moving average. When it does hit the moving average, it still fails, right? So be very careful on that as it's moving lower. All right, guys, great plan there on the S&P. Let's keep going. NASDAQ is very similar, right? NASDAQ and the S&P are very similar. The NASDAQ, though, definitely has a bigger carrot at the end of its stick, right? A lot more space to go before that NASDAQ goes back and retest the high. We're bullish, trading range, measured move, and a support trend line on the chart this evening. The bulls have momentum, and as expected, right, the market pulled back off yesterday's highs, gave the buyers a perfect two-try seller failure pattern, right, to get long into the stops of the sellers for a rally back higher. But the session ended with pretty much a sloppy trading range. Right? The buyers are clearly voicing their opinion right now. Right, They're rejecting the idea of buying into those highs. So we have a trading range with a bull bias. Right, What does a bull bias range tell me to do? Yeah, it tells me don't try to trade the breakouts here. Right, Breakouts don't work very well. Trade the failure. One try, two try, Right, the two try failure pattern. And again, you can learn, you can see hundreds of examples of these two try failure patterns inside that free trading class below the video on the blog, right, or linked up in the upper right-hand corner, right, on our, right, on the YouTube channel, all right, so that's the plan, okay, session ended, right, with that trading range, bull bias into the range, buying below low of that range, if we can get this thing to move higher here, then we really got some trouble, okay, because again, we're going right up into that high, if we push higher, traps, anytime we find ourselves in a position where our only option is to buy high, Traps, 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 and mass traps, right? So if you go higher there, looking for traps. So zooming in here on the chart right now, again, we know where the objective is. The objective is back to retest, not yesterday's high, but technically this morning's high, right? Up there at 73.68, we'll call that 69, 73.69. We know the buyers want to retest it, but we know they got bogged down this range. Okay, the range got a bull bias, one try, two try. Again, you want that moving average coming through. That tells me sellers have tried once. They've tried twice. Everybody's in the bear side now, right? When they fail, all those bears are going to have to run for the exits, right? That is the first opportunity here on the NASDAQ. Okay, and you can see here, this one's more of a range, right? Not like a triangle we saw on the S&P. Still same thing though, right? Like I mentioned earlier, take that trading range. That makes support, right? That makes resistance, Okay, so just be careful as you go higher here, but I would want to see definitely one try, two try, right back up into that range. And then as we go higher, the high side is going to be difficult, right? Because again, you want to see a strong enough break up without actually reaching that top. That's going to be the tricky part. It's going to be a little bit like threading a needle tomorrow morning in the NASDAQ. When we do push higher here, 
I'm going to want to see some pretty decent strength going higher and then start looking for an aggressive trap. One of those one of those little pickpockets, right? We've seen a couple of those over the past few weeks where we see strong runs, clicking those traps. You're going to have to have your finger on the trigger, ready to go for those, right? They are going to move quickly. You'll see it break up. Again, it will feel like you're going to miss out on this move. You're probably not going to get a very deep pullback on it. It's just a little trap low. It's a bear trap right below that prior swing. And again, the key is you've got to get it before you get back to that high right at that 69s, right up around those highs. Okay, so make sure you keep your eyes open if we do run higher. And, you know, don't be afraid to, to miss it. You know, if you don't get it, you don't get it. There's no, there's no prize for taking the most number of trades, right? The prize is doing as little trading as you can and making the most amount of profit. Now, as we go higher here, don't forget, we go back to retest the higher, right, the higher. We do we pull back. If that's the case, this becomes one monster range. Okay, we'll probably collapse back down to that low. Do we go back to those highs? Right? Do we break through those highs? If we break through those highs, well, then from there, right, we're looking at we're looking at big measured moves here. From there, then, right, then we go one, two, three, right, and that creates a very big vacuum now, right, for those bulls. What do we got up here? Yeah, prior swings there. So we're talking next objective, probably 74, 60. We'll have to put that together tomorrow once we see some proof of them going through those highs. Remember, the key, though, is is once we go through those highs here tomorrow, get that moving average up, right? Use that level, not as resistance now, but as support, right? Get the moving average above it. Get that push through it. That's always the trick, right, to make sure you've got a strong enough breakout, right? So again, it's one try, two try, back up, right? It's It's Trap, 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 right before you hit that high. Again, strong move up. Bear trap, below that low. And again, you'll learn a lot more about traps, right? All the trap patterns, bull traps, bear traps, right? All those little sneaky little trap patterns we look for every day at the trade room, right? Grab the, grab the free course in the upper right-hand corner. It's also linked up below the video tonight on the blog. And then, of course, if we do get that strong move through, use that high, right? Use it, get that trend line up. And then, of course, bingo, right? Grabbing that look from there. All right, guys? So pretty simple there, right? Pretty simple there. Looking for that strong move up. In fact, we might even get a little bit of a little hidden channel there, right, off that low, right? We'll be looking for all that stuff, right, once we go push those highs. You know, we're a trending market. So in a trending market, channels, measured moves, those are typically going to be where you get your most bang for the buck. All right, guys, NASDAQ looking good, looking good. Let's keep going here. How about some How about some gold? A very interesting chart tonight on gold. Gold is still bullish, barely, barely, with two trading ranges and a support trend line on the chart this evening. The chart range clearly, or the large range here, excuse me, this this large range here, which, of course, we talked about in last night's newsletter, this, that, that large range clearly shows this move lower as – one try and then two tries, right? It's just kind of a kind of a kind of a macro version of a two try. Sometimes what happens is when you see that first try down is so large, it is allowed to fail and go up, and they kind of run it back lower again. It doesn't happen very often, but I'm looking at this right now as being two tries. It's not a reversal by any means, right? Because that second try. Right, that second try tells me now to keep my eyes open now for that move going back up. It's the larger right two try, right? It's really this range. It's that range right there, right? The range inside the range, what most experienced price action traders would call a nested range. You've really got to read like real books to learn that term, right? Nested range, right? Ain't no Kindle books telling you about nested ranges, right? Like paper books, like candlelight, paper books. Some of the old school books I've read talk about these nested patterns, right? The only time I've ever heard anybody use that word nested. So you're really dating yourself right now if you if you if you use the word if you use the word nested. But that's the but that's the key, right? That's the big clue. The nested range, right, started with the bull momentum. So now, as this market's pushing lower here, what is this? This is actually the f first try, right? It's not. It's it's the it's the second try of the big range. It's the first try, right, of the smaller range. And I can assume now that sellers are probably going to try again. And of course, here we are. We get this beautiful support trend line coming in. I mean, what more do you want, 
right? Well, I mean, what more do you want, right? You want to put a little, put a little a silver platter on it too, a little bell, a little, ro- little, 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 little uh, bow on the top too. That's a beautiful two-try seller failure setup, right? Coming off a proven, a proven support trend line. One, two, three, four. I mean, come on, right? Probably, probably a few more back here too. Okay, so that's the plan there, right? The nested range has the bull momentum. So as price tries to go lower now, I can assume that buyers are going to wait for that second try, right? So large range says, look to go back in, right? One try, two try. Smaller range says, look to go back in, right? One try, two try. And again, if we can incorporate, take that range, find that range expansion, right? That support, find that trend line, that support. Like I said before, you know, I could put a bow on it for you too, and it will look it will look even better, right? Looks beautiful. Now all we need is is to get a good entry. Let's let these sellers now try to sell that next pullback, right? Let's let them sell the next pullback. Then we know where their stops are, and we can buy right into their stops, right? That's what I'm looking for tomorrow, right? Maybe it's something like this: one try, two try, a little higher, a little higher low there. Right? Maybe you'll find some divergence if you guys like to use divergence tools, right? Higher low, look for maybe a, right, a lower low on the MACD, right? <laughs> right? If, if, that's, if that's something up your alley, right? Watch a little bit of divergence there. That might be a good little clue there as well. I don't think you're going to need divergence, but I know a lot of you guys right, like to watch it. And, you know, divergence is great. You know, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad about divergence. I would use it too, but I find that divergence, you know, divergence is a lot like Fibonacci, by itself, it's not really reliable enough to use. When you combine it with proven trend lines like this or range expansions or you know real proven levels, right? The range is proven. I can use that range expansion. That trend line is proven, right? But uh, you know, a, a 61.8% you know pullback just because it's the number, it's not enough. Right, momentum divergence just because it's momentum divergence is not enough. But when I combine it with all of these other tools, man, oh man, that really that really puts together a great strategy. My personal opinion is you don't even need those extra tools because I'm gonna I'm gonna look for this entry long whether or not it's a Fibonacci tool, it's a pivot, it's a Bollinger. I don't care. I don't care what other indicators are firing off. It's that support in a bull market. So if you're wondering, you know, why don't you use all those tools, Joe? Uh, I did when I was a younger trader. I did, right? But the problem is I've, I've learned that they just – they don't make or break a trade. You know, it's like, uh, it's, like, it's like putting a toaster oven in a hot tub, right? It's like it's a, it's a feature that is I – I don't need it. I don't need it. It's bogging me down, right? It's just one more thing to, be, to clutter up this already very distracted brain of mine, right? So anyways. So maybe you find divergence there, maybe you don't. I don't think it's necessary. That's the plan as we go lower. I remember though now, how do we break out? What does a bear market look like? We already get strength. Looking for a pullback, right? And one more year, strength off that low. What do you do? Mark up that low, mark up the new channel. You got it, you got it, you got it, right? And we're looking to sell off that high, right? All right. Now, what if we go higher here? If we go higher here, we're rolling here. We don't want to be buying up here, right? So be very, very careful up top. I'm looking for that one, two. Remember we talked about this last night? We talked about this last night, right? You can't sell a two-try failure against a trend line. Well, you can, but you don't want to. What you want to do is wait for it and then look for that hidden channel, right? That hidden channel pullback pattern. That's a much more reliable trade off those highs because you're going against the momentum. Right? I can take seller failures in a bull market, one, two, back up, but trying to take buyer failures, the two-try buyer failure in a, in a bull market, what happens a lot of times is there are there's buyers waiting there, and they're going to make you pay. Right? They'll make you pay. All right? So be careful trying to sell off those highs. Very, very interesting, those nested trading ranges today on the gold. Very, very cool stuff. And then wrapping tonight, this is the breeze. Euro's looking beautiful. Euro's bearish with a spike in channel, a measured move, and a round number in the chart this evening. The bears have the momentum right now. That's pretty obvious, right? Spike in channel, right? Spike in channel. There's your spike in channel. Now, spike in channels are pretty interesting patterns because spike in channels, they start with this big spike, right? That's one opportunity to get, to get short, right? Big spike. Then you've got another opportunity, the pullback. 
and another opportunity to pull back. So the, the, the kind of the point I want to make is a spike in channel pattern, everybody's already in this move. Whether it's the spike, it's the first or the second pullback. Everybody's already in this move. And when everybody's had a chance to get in on these moves, you can probably expect some profit taking, right? This is a little bit of that market psychology stuff that I talk about, right? I always remind you guys, the markets are groups of people. And these groups of people, they have a different type of personality. That's why trading with indicators and instincts just don't work, right? You know, keep your instincts to other parts of your life. Instincts have no real value in trading, you know, unless kind of a funny story. I actually had one of my monitors catch on fire a, a, a long time ago. Um, I bought a cable on Amazon, no, no not on Amazon, on, on eBay. And it was an old, like an old refurbished, like uh, HDMI cable. I'm running my trade room. You want to talk about instincts, right? When you're trading, I'm running my trade room and no joke, one of my monitors bursts into flames, like, like, like almost torched the whole house down, um, all because I bought a refurbished cable on eBay. Yeah, don't buy the refurbished ones. You pay the extra money for that. Talk about instincts, right? I, my instincts, that's when my instincts were, were really key, right? I was pretty quick to close my position and, and get the fire extinguisher, actually save the fire extinguisher. The most important thing you can do in your office is a blanket. Go to Amazon. Do go to Amazon. You can buy a refurbished one of these if you want. And on Amazon, they have these fire blankets. Fire blankets are the most, are the most valuable and effective thing you'd have in your office. Because you know you use one of those fire extinguishers, you're going to spray that crap all over everything, right? If it didn't burn the computer down, that computer's toast anyways, right? You just sprayed that sucker, right, with all that foam. So the best way to do it is, is put a blanket over it, right? And that blanket also can be used for personal protection, right, if it gets out of control. Obviously, obviously consult with your fire department, but that was just talking about instincts. I mean, get off, get off track here, but that's the only time when instincts, right, have helped my trading. They, they were more helping my computer and helping my house stay, stay standing, but that's where your instincts, right, will come in handy. Now, what's happening right now is back, back on track here. I just got flashbacks to that, that bursting into, into flames here, and I'm sure some of you guys are laughing right now because I'm sure you were in the trade room with me. This is many, many years ago. Uh, and, and bottom line is a spike in channel pattern has a personality to it. Everyone's already short this market, right? Everyone's already short this market. So we typically see these big, big pullbacks on spike in channels because people are getting out. They're taking their profit. And those big pullbacks usually end up going back down, right, to retest that, right, that low. So if we do get that pullback, then obviously we're looking for that two try rule, right? Up, moving average comes over. Buyers buy the pullback, one try, two try, right? One try, two try, let them try it. Then we look for that failure going lower. We don't chase the failure. We want to mark up that low, mark up these lows, find that channel, and sell off the top of that channel, right? Two try failure into hidden channel pullback pattern. And again, you'll learn all about those patterns in that free trading course I keep pointing you towards. Now, if price keeps pushing lower, right? Price keeps pushing lower. It really has a lot to do with how it pushes lower. For example, do we just roll lower and rotate? If we're rotating, we're looking for sell patterns off the high of that channel. But keep in mind, one of those pullbacks, sorry, one of those pullbacks is going to, one of those pullbacks is going to jump, right? And that's the one you really want to be waiting for. That's the one you're waiting for right there because that's what the big money is. Right, that's the one everybody's waiting for. Now, if we roll lower and really start jumping, right, kind of like that, that, hey, drop what you're doing, we're going lower, that real sense of urgency there, it's because that round number at 15,000 is right there. So what you want to do is, is again, when you get that sense of urgency, you know what the plan is, right? Traps, right? Traps. If you start seeing that jump, that run, all right, no indicator's going to tell you this, okay? You can be watching those candlesticks. Boom, 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 boom. It'll be pounding lower, right? Find that last swing and get ready for that nice, good signal, right, to sell off of that trap, okay? Now, obviously, we should probably be ready for reversal, right? Looking at this reversal, yeah, I mean, we, were, we spent the whole, you know, ever since the beginning of the month here inside this darn range. What does reversal look like? Strength move up, pull back to the moving average, right, and strong move through, right? Strength, pull back strength. 
Okay, once we get that jump off the moving average, I'm not talking about this strong move up. Strong move up happen all the time. Wait to see, can they hold it? If not, we're going back down. But if they can hold that pullback and jump, now we know new trend, find the new channel, find that sweet spot. It's right there, right? And look to buy that pullback on the way back higher, right? And again, if it does just kind of short covering rally, all hands on deck, right? If this thing just, it barely pulls back, just runs and runs, right? Again, traps. Again, it's all about personality there, right? It's all about personality at that point. And where's our target? Target's going to be going back up to retest that high, right? That's where we're trying to go if this thing reverses. All right, guys? Great job today. Great job today. And yes, make sure you pick up that fire blanket. All right. Trust me. It'll be it's a it's a it's a ten dollar investment that just might not save you might save your house and might save your life someday. So who knew, right? Little life saving tips on top of some trading strategy. I I digress. I digress. Let's get let's wrap it up though. We get some baseball to watch. Rest up tonight. Big day tomorrow. Don't forget these markets can be very complicated. But not to worry. We're going to break this down, slice it and dice it, and make this easy to follow and easy to trade every day in our trade room. We all know there's money to be made out there. It's all about using the right plan. It's okay if you try trading on instincts or indicators before. So did I. Most of us did at the beginning of our career. But now you know better. Now you can do better. It's time to take the right direction in your career. Come out and trade with me every morning in our trade room. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead by example, following our rules, watching for those A-plus patterns, executing this plan we talked about tonight on our nightly newsletter. If you want to join me, grab the advanced classes. They're right below the video tonight, right? Linked up in the description on the YouTube channel. Go to the website here at schooltrade.com. I've got a toll-free number right next to my ugly mug. Call that toll-free number. Give me, a, give me a holler. Join the free trial. I get a great free pass. Come on, join the trade room as a guest, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If not, we'll do it again tomorrow evening, same time, same place, right? And more of the corny trading jokes and life analogies tomorrow. I promise, keep us to a minimum tomorrow. Who you got tonight? Who you got tonight? Who's coming through tonight? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Baseball is just getting warmed up. I had this I had this reoccurring nightmare that I have the Dodgers and the Red Sox in the World Series and I've got I've got no decision on who I want to run, who I want to cheer for. I grew up in New England. I've been living almost half my life now in Los Angeles, and I'm going to have some family members that are going to be really, really hard pressed to know what jersey I'm wearing for Game One. But that's a problem I'm looking forward to kicking down the road till till later on in the month of October. You guys have a great night. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye bye for now.